Hey YouTube, Andy here. Thanks for checking in. Uh, this is just going to be another tech nostalgia video where I take a look at a few old school PDAs. Um, if you're the one viewer that has been checking out my previous videos, you'll know that I've been on a retro tech kick lately and have been snapping up all sorts of different items, mostly ThinkPads um, and then some different PDAs. So I thought it was time to take a little bit of a pause from the buying as stuff is uh, finally wrapping up getting delivered from eBay and actually start playing with some of this stuff and making some videos. So here we are and I'm going to take a look at a few different PDAs and one very early smartphone uh, that I have recently acquired and we're going to play around with them a little bit. So let's dive in with the most recent acquisition. All right, so this is the actually newest of all the devices, not just to me, but actually the, the latest or least. This is the Samsung Jack, or at least that's what it was called in the US. As you can see, it's sort of a Blackberry style phone. Uh, this was also called the Samsung i637, which I actually think is the version I got, sort of the international one, because I did not have any AT&T junk on this one, which is a welcome surprise because all the old reviews I read uh, mentioned quite a bit of junk. So as you can see, uh, the only connector is that one sort of serial, very Apple style connector. It's like the old iPod, early iPhone connector. Um, that's the only connector that's for audio and for uh, USB. There is a selfie mirror because there's no front facing camera. So that's uh, a nice clever way to allow you to still take a selfie because Samsung knows that people want that. Uh, if we take off that battery cover, and look how shiny that little band is. You can see there's the SIM card slot and we've got a micro SD card slot right next to it with the battery hanging out right there. Um, this was a brand new phone uh, from 2009 or 2008 that was still brand new in the box, uh, still had the protective wrappers on it. As you can see, I don't know why I always insist on uh, taking these covers off on on the videos because I always struggle to put it back on, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show my struggle and give you the thumbs up because I know I'm not the only person who struggles with those. Um, so as you can see, one pleasant surprise, there's the power button and there's a volume rocker right below that. Um, not a whole lot of buttons, but actually the button placement makes quite a bit of sense uh, and works pretty well. I need to look up and see actually if this has an IR blaster because uh, this could be really useful just as a remote app. That's one of the great things about a lot of these old devices. There's a volume rocker in action. But one of the things I like about these old PDAs is that most of them have IR blasters. And a lot of the old apps, you know, sometimes there's still a code that will work even with relatively modern TVs. So that can be useful. A lot of modern smartphones have uh, foregone that feature. So we can see this one is pretty much straight out of the box. I didn't really have anything installed on it. Uh, I did get it connected to the Wi-Fi I've set up. Due to all these uh, PDAs, these old PDAs I have, I've set up an unsecured Wi-Fi just running off a uh, separate router that I have locked down to the firewall on its own little DMZ. Uh, so that's pretty exciting uh, that I've got a little unsecured Wi-Fi just for these devices rocking and rolling. So yeah, nothing much to look at here. Uh, Internet Explorer, unfortunately, we'll try and see if we can get anything to work. I tried, I've set up, I bought a few, I went on a domain buying spree recently and bought a few dot .today domains. So one I set up as an old browser dot .today and I'm actually building a website in, uh, what is it, Expression Web 4, which is like basically Microsoft's like up to date, or upper to, more up to date version of front page. I think this was released in 2010. As you can see, nothing's working. Uh, there are your hands in the air. The color temperature of the camera has changed. I don't know if I'm going to color correct that. Probably not, since I'm talking about it. Uh, but yeah, the screen on this device is actually really nice. Um, there's a selfie I took earlier. First try, I used the selfie mirror. I remember the selfie mirrors back in the day. They were well executed. Samsung knows what they're doing. So camera, not not too bad of quality. 3.2 megapixels. You can see my green backpack in the in the back. I'll definitely have to take some pictures with this. They, by 2008, they were probably, the camera should be okay, though I don't think it has autofocus. So we're going to go ahead and lock that and put that away. Um, and we're going to move on to, I was trying to decide, that's why there's this pause here and you see this ugly wall and the dock for my handspring visor Neo. I was trying to decide what to pick, so I decided to stick with Windows Mobile because I actually have some pretty cool games loaded on this. So this is an iPack 
110 that Samsung Jack, even though it's a little newer, this PDA was released in 20, 2007. The Samsung Jack 10809. Uh, this one has a more universal USB. I'm not sure if that is universal or if it just looks universal. Uh, it looks very familiar. There's a button just for voice recording. There's the power button on this or the lock screen button. Uh, so this actually has about 100 megahertz faster processor, even though it's older than the Samsung Jack, which says May 2009 um, from what I'm looking at, GSM Arena. So that's two years newer, but slower processor. It was an Intel on the old HP iPack on the 110. I do have a two gig SD card in there to hold all the games. Um, so I don't know about the performance because the, I don't know, it seems comparable. One thing that's interesting is that this came with Windows Mobile 6.5, whereas the old HP, uh, or not the HP, the Samsung Jack, and not old, they're, they're all old, came with Windows Mobile 6.1. Though it is upgradable, but that did not work over the air. I got it connected to Wi-Fi in it. Couldn't find that. Um, I am planning to get a SIM card to put in that, so that'll be exciting for future. Here I am struggling. I should learn not to put the covers on um, because there's not a lot to see on this device, but I really struggled with this cover. So the key is you've got to sort of click it in. It has, it's a mix of those click tabs like you get on a lot of thin laptops. Um, and then it also slides in. So I eventually figured it out. Uh, one nice thing, about the iPack 110 is that it actually has a normal 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. <laughs> this is beautiful to watch. Um, so aside from being able to expand your storage using the SD card, uh, you can use any headphones you want on this, which is really, really nice because you don't get that. So in the headphones that the jack came with were not very good. So here we go, screen. Um, it's obviously a lot bigger than the screen on the Samsung jack, but you know, the screen quality is a lot worse. Uh, the colors are a lot worse. I think the resolution is actually similar, but the screen's like twice as big. So I think the density is better on that jack. So this doesn't look very great. Uh, but compared to the other devices we're going to be looking at after this, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, so we're going through the calendar. We can see I've got a lot on my schedule with all those Wednesday meetings. But we have our different calendar views. I always, you've got to look at the calendar type stuff if you're looking at an old PDA. Uh, so we've got our buttons down at the bottom, calendar, uh, then we've got the Windows button, start button right next to that, volume, or not volume rocker, like D-pad with the OK button, and then the actual OK button, which seems weird that the center button should be OK normally, but OK is a very special button in Windows Mobile 6.5 because it also acts as like the X button, and then we have the email button. So I set up my palm top dot today. This was part of my domain buying spree. I bought this one. So I'm hoping to make this just a repository of software and drivers uh, and pictures and sort of views, just good stuff. Uh, and I have it active. So I tried to sign it up for some junk mail or stuff where I know I was gonna get sent email so that I could use it on these devices. So we can see it. it is receiving email, that blue light that's on in the top left of the device shows that it is connected to Wi-Fi. And that light is always on when you're connected to Wi-Fi, which is a little bit obnoxious. But it's actually a good thing because I've realized if you leave it connected to Wi-Fi, your battery is going to die on this thing in no time. So you really do need to make sure that you turn Wi-Fi off uh, if you buy one of these old Windows Mobile devices uh, when you're not using it, of course, when you're putting it to sleep. So I'm trying to get out to the Internet. I opened up some email, and it's trying... It's trying, and it looks like it's quitting because it just took me back to the inbox. So what else can we look at? I know I have some games if we poke around. Oh, what is... Okay, so I have Opera Mobile installed, so it actually looks like it is trying to open that USA Today link. And we made it. We made it to USA Today. So the internet does kind of work on this. As you can see, things don't look the greatest, but we're out. So this is Opera Mobile 10. There's also uh, two versions of Opera Mini that you can use on this, which I haven't tried yet, though I have them downloaded and sort of, you know, on deck. Uh, but those do sort of a compressed version of it. So there's the Java version, which I think is obviously going to run slower. This USA Today website isn't totally working for me, but we are going to try to get to Reddit soon, which actually um, will work. So, and... I don't know. I don't think the new Reddit redesign will work at all. Um, but Reddit's going to do okay. Loading is 
is not the fastest. I guess this is 802.11 G speed, so theoretically 54 megabits per second. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was really not even getting 802.11 B, 11 megabits per second. Uh, what I'm trying to do, I actually want to get to the mobile site because I think that'll work a little better. Because one thing you do have to worry about on these Windows Mobile, yeah, forget the certificate. Any old device, I've noticed even Windows XP until you get it fully up to date, you're, you're just like certificate hell uh, on the modern version of the internet. So we're out. So we've got the mobile version. It's actually kind of usable. Uh, people complaining about the redesign. Let's see if the comments work and how they look. Um, but you can actually get out on this. So I'm, I'm considering downloading the SDK, the development kit for Windows Mobile, uh, just because that Samsung Jack, and I actually love that form factor with the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, it is a little small. It looks even smaller on video. Uh, but I'm thinking about, I'm going to put a SIM card in it. It's a 3G phone. It's like the 3.5G, so it can actually do reasonably fast data. Oh, games. Uh, I want to try it out. So since we've got games... Uh, or a great old school PDA. Gaming was one of the huge benefits on these. And with a 600 and like 30 megahertz processor, uh, this IPAC 110 is a very capable Windows Mobile 6.5 gaming machine. So this is what I was talking about though with the, the memory, that you've gotta be careful with like browsers on this because the memory will fill up on Windows Mobile 6.5, your RAM, and you have to go close something out because it won't automatically do it. So Opera, was using a whole bunch of RAM, and I wasn't able to run Age of Empires. Uh, so we're gonna go try that again, right from the start menu. I love the start menu, it actually works very much like uh, sort of a Windows XP start menu condensed into one with the recent apps. You can see this is a landscape game, so we'll turn. That's fine, we're gonna get a little bit of audio. Uh, I'm not sure how well, well you're gonna be able to hear that, uh, because it was pretty soft, actually playing it. There's some, some other games coming up that will be a little bit easier to hear, uh, but you should be able to hear it because I just flipped on the mic for the camera, which I forgot to do, which is why I'm doing a no on-camera part of this video. I forgot to have the mic on for that part, so I'm a noob. So we were just doing all voiceover. So yeah, picking civilizations, making sure I had to go make sure that I had this set on easy because I don't just want to get rushed. Though I was honestly thinking about completing a full game uh, because I'm going to put in a little comparison footage from Age of Empires Definitive Edition. Because this is the original Age of Empires, uh, the very first one. So I'm not actually the greatest at this game uh, moving around. I know a little bit more about Age of Empires 2 and a lot more about Age of Empires 3. But I know I'm looking for my berry bushes uh, because there are no sheep here. There are no sheep, no boars. There are some deer if you can find them. But this is pretty cool. So it actually plays pretty well. Um, I think if you spent some time getting used to the controls, this would be surprisingly playable. Uh, you can drag to select multiple units, drag in a box around them. Uh, this would be, this is pretty good. It, I mean, the graphics, it's extremely smooth. I can't believe how fast and how smooth this plays. Uh, so as you can see, the graphics don't look great compared to the definitive edition, but I mean, this is, uh, this is what it looked like back in the day. So, pretty good building houses, trying to create villagers. Uh, no action to be seen of, because it takes a while to really get, get action going, and I'm not going to go exploring too far. So we're just going to exit out, because, uh, like I reminded myself with going to that website, or getting on the internet, you, you need to exit your applications in Windows Mobile 6.5. Or else you're going to be making a trip to the settings to go clear out some RAM. So because everyone loves SimCity, and because we do have a SimCity comparison kind of coming up on one of the Palm OS devices, let's fire up SimCity 2000. Uh, this is a game, I, I attempted to play this a little bit, you know, before making this video. The sound is a lot louder for this than it is in Age of Empires, at least that music. Uh, and I just find this game not at all enjoyable to play. Uh, Age of Empires, I think I could actually do, playing for a while. Uh, this game, not so much. SimCity, not so much on, on the Palm. Or the Pocket PC. Or the Palm OS device, which we'll be seeing in a moment. So, this device does have 128 megs of RAM, so you can see these games are great. And it is, you know, pretty fully featured. I'm trying to, I was trying to zoom in. 
and I, you're going to see me just missing the zoom button altogether in a moment. Uh, because I'm trying to find something interesting to show here since I didn't build this city, but... Like, like anyone who hasn't actually committed any time by Zoom Button, I'm just gonna start some disasters. If you haven't actually built up a city, if you, if it, that you're, you have, and your city's failing, and, and you don't feel like putting in the effort, let's trigger some disasters, get the monster in there, and there should be a tornado as well. The game is, of course, paused. Uh, so we'll see, how do we unpause the game? No, that's not it. Uh, there we go. Turtle. And llama speed. So we've got, we've got the monster, the alien. I could have sworn on PC it was called an, an alien attack instead of monster. But, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But look at this. This is a, this is such a capable machine. If the controls were a little better... I almost, I don't understand how they weren't using this hardware back then to, to produce gaming machines. Because, you know, it seems like there should have been a really obvious competition to Nintendo and, and the Sony PSP. With these types of machines, just build one with a, uh, a proper D-pad and some buttons on the other side. As you can see, we can change our theme. Uh, you can also set custom backgrounds just by going to the gallery and or the photo app uh, going to my pictures I think it might even be called uh, because it is Windows Mobile uh, so there we go we'll put our stylus back in and that'll be it for this device right now I definitely want to spend more time with this one because it actually works pretty well on the internet and it's probably gonna be the best like gaming device so I need to see what emulators I can get rocking and rolling on that because I know there are plenty out there um, so we're gonna actually stick with the newer devices and move on to the next newest this is a device originally introduced in 2005, the Palm Tungsten TX. So as you can see, it has its own proprietary connector down at the bottom. Just nice all business, all business with Palm. Uh, nice black. I actually really like the build quality of, of this. I always kind of preferred Palm OS devices back in the day um, until I got a little bit older and, and wanted to do more with them and, and the internet was bigger. In sort of the pre-internet day, the Palm OS devices were the shiz because they were so simple and, and you can really see in the design language, they, they're almost reminiscent of modern Android and iOS devices. Uh, they got so much right in terms of how mobile devices intuitively work, uh, but also not that capable. As you can see, I do have a fair amount of games and, and some apps installed. Uh, there's some good stuff in here. The battery running down on this one. The battery life isn't the greatest, but it'll stay if you've got the screen off. It'll last forever because there is no just like leaking usage in the background. I could have sworn I had mail set up on this palm. I know I have mail on the older palm that we're going to look at next. I could have sworn I had it set up on this as well, but we do at least we've got that marketing meeting and we've got the dueling marketing meetings actually. So we're going to see if we can clean that up. Uh, but just my jam-packed schedule. So this is pretty cool. We've got the color Palm OS device. It's pretty snappy. It Honestly, though, it's got a 300 megahertz processor. I think either 32 or 64 megs of RAM. I actually feel like this should be a little bit snappier than it is. Um, it does have Wi-Fi built in. That's actually... I never had one of these back in the day. I didn't have a lot of nostalgia for this. But I wanted a Palm OS device that had built-in Wi-Fi. And there are not many of them. Uh, so this is one of them. That's why I bought this device. This is actually the most expensive of all the devices I've purchased, even though it's in the worst shape. There's a little nick on the screen. Um, and, and there are definitely some scratches, and it's in it's in very used condition. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not going to connect to the server. So I think I goofed something up with my settings trying to get mail working on it. And it's going to take its time to respond... Now, Windows Mobile, at least, will a lot of times let you brute force it a little more. But So we are just waiting as it's crashed. May as well take a look around back. Uh, see if there's a reset button somewhere. I think there is. But, oh, boop. Got our sound. Go power the screen back on. And as you can see on this one, the graffiti area at the bottom is not permanent. Like it is on the older Palm OS devices, which is really nice. Yeah, so here we go, which... It feels so much like a modern device, or it looks so much like a modern handheld computer. You can almost imagine if that just had a capacitive screen, a few gestures built in, some updated apps, more RAM. You know, it could have been a very capable device. Uh, but speaking of games, let's hop into Dope Wars. 
which this was my favorite game sort of back in the day because you could play it on any device. I have no idea. I guess this game must have been developed by some board student at some point. You can see graffiti actually works a little bit, kind of, when I know what I'm doing. Um, but this game was a great time killer because you could play this on a TI-83 calculator. You can play this on any Palm Pilot, even the, the old, like, 1997, like, first-gen original Palm Pilot. I don't need a trench coat. Um, so this game was a good time killer, and, and you're doing math, so you're keeping yourself mentally engaged. It's educational at the same time. You're improving your street smarts. Seems like a pretty good deal. Let's hit some more ecstasy. Um, so, yeah, you do have to actually have your spot selected. Graffiti is a little bit finicky. So it's not really handwriting recognition. It's more of gesture recognition. So you have to learn the gestures for the letters. So a lot of them just happen to be exactly the same as how you would normally draw the letter or the number. That's what they try to do. But some of them, like the lowercase e, just like freaking kills me when, I, when I've tried it at times. Um, some of them are not the easiest, but, you know... If they'd figured out a, a way to type or, I don't know, a better handwriting recognition, that would have been killer for, for Palm. But let's go take a look at, I talked about SimCity because we've got this comparison. So on the Palm OS, Palm OS 5, I'm actually not sure what version this would go back to. I'm guessing 4, just due to the way it looks. I bet this could run on Palm OS 4. Um, you don't get SimCity 2000, but you do get the original SimCity. And as you can see, the graphics are... A lot worse. Um, I also was not able to get a city loaded. It just popped into this game I'd already started from before. And I'm not able to figure out how to how to get out of this. Normally on Palm OS you go straight up to the very top. Uh, it's like the file menu on Windows. And you just, it's hidden by default, but you just press up there and you get a menu. That didn't work for me. So I don't have much to show you other than just like looking at this blank blank ass map because it's May 1900 and nothing has developed. So let's draw let's draw a road. Um, drawing roads actually is pretty pretty good. <laughs> um, on this, uh, one thing I will say comparing the two devices so far, just like the two categories of devices, is that the Palm Tungsten TX and, and the Palm devices have much better resistive touchscreens. Like in terms of the stylus to touchscreen interaction, that uh, that IPAC 110 from HP, just dreadful. I wish I hadn't launched this, wow, that's loud. Uh, because I do not have a registration code. I need to look about acquiring one. Because I actually wanna play this. This is like the one game on Palm OS that I actually wanna play. If I can get out, leave me alone. Uh, so many apps, they won't let you just hit the home button like on a modern device. Uh, but that's actually, I love the Skyforce games on Android and iOS, so I really want to play it here. So just looking around, old school, we've got Teal Paint, which is a pretty cool little just drawing, painting application. I've actually seen some people do really creative stuff in that. Uh, but it's now time to look at a device that will really force you to be truly creative if you want to paint with it because it is a monochrome screen. This is the very first Palm OS device I ever had. This is a handspring visor Neo. This is maximum nostalgia for me. Uh, and this is also one of the very first devices I bought when kicking off this whole tech retro tech kick. I've been on kicking off uh, the retro tech kick. That was not an elegant way to speak, but hey, what are you going to do? So as you can see, I love the way the stylus actually it drops in and uh, it's very easy to get out with your thumb on this. Nice location. Uh, on the back, it has the springboard expansion slot, which is almost like a Game Boy slot. Uh, when I bought this, I was planning to get some modules, but like the, the best ones, the Wi-Fi one is usually about 30 bucks, which seems a little bit expensive. That's what I paid for this whole thing with the dock, the clear dock you can see in the background. One nice thing about the Visor Neo and a lot of the early visors is that it takes triple A's, which is very convenient. I need to get some rechargeables, but this is the first pack I put in. And as you can see, when I turn it on, the battery has had basically nothing run off of it. So it's crazy. These have been in for over a month now. And I used this a fair amount, like the first week or two I had it, because this was before I fully committed to just getting a bunch of retro stuff. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, the, the screen on this, the resistive screen, it actually is very smooth. It's, um, you know, it's not nice. It's not like you don't get any sort of a papery texture. It doesn't have a texture like that. 
but you don't have to press nearly as hard as you do on the IPAC 110. It is loud and clicky, but it's a, it's a really nice resistive touchscreen. So looking through the apps, there's obviously a little bit of a less selection. I do have email synced to this one. This one has no networking built in. Um, so as I mentioned, there's the Wi-Fi springboard module that I have not gotten. There's also, they never release an Ethernet. That's actually the one I would like the most, just to not have to put up with the modern, modern Wi-Fi issues. Um, but there's also a 56K modem one, which I was really tempted, because I have access to a dial-up internet server uh, where I could set that up, except for I do not have a landline phone. And I, I don't think I, I could justify getting a landline phone installed just to use dial-up internet on a 15 to 20-year-old PDA. Um, so as you can see, I've still got the very same jam-packed schedule. Uh, marking meetings. Let's see if we can get rid of those duplicate meetings. Look how powerful. I mean, these devices, you know, they're not going to keep you connected uh, as well. Certainly not this one. There's no Wi-Fi at all. And really, the Wi-Fi is useless on the other two PDAs because it, they don't do WPA. So you're just not going to be able to use modern Wi-Fi on these. But if you didn't mind syncing and you, you actually didn't mind living sort of an asynchronous schedule and being out of touch a little bit. These are devices that could be totally usable, or if you just want to use them to sort of store information, keep your address book, uh, and quite simply play a little bit of Dope Wars to take your mind off things. Look at that, $12 per pill for Ecstasy. What a price. Uh, so we got to buy up and see if we can go flip this quick. As you can see, Graffiti, once I got used to it back on the Palm Tungsten, because every time you use one of these, I guess if I used it every day, uh, I would probably get very used to graffiti, but I have to relearn it every time. Now let's pick up some speed as well. 88 bucks, that seems like a pretty good price. Uh, do I want a gun? No. No, there's nothing here. Oh, wait, no, yeah, we're selling these. Look at that, that's a huge profit. So we made a nice little profit. We're going to jet. And so let's see about some other games that we have. Uh, hardball, so actually some of the best games... On these old PDAs are the ones that can make use of the physical buttons. So Hardball is a good example. This is another like classic time killer, and this is the type of game that almost seems like too quaint in in 2018. But even when I was a kid, like in the late 90s, this type of game was still somewhat entertaining. <laughs> you would you I would still occasionally play like there's flash game versions of Pong. There's a good Cartoon Network Scooby Doo version of Pong that I used to occasionally play. Um, so just hopping around the settings, I want to get uh, and see if we can find an old school palm. There we go, there's the old P with the dots logo, 1999. Uh, just some old school stuff. This is Palm OS version 3.5. The tungsten was 5.0, I think, or 5.0.1, something like that. Well, we will reseat the stylus, and that will be it for the Visor Neo, and also this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave a comment below.